Doing a postdoctoral position in the United States of America is considered reputed. And many people migrate from India doing postdoctoral position in the US after completing their PhD. But what is going to be the real truth of postdoctoral position in the United States of America? What are the benefits or what are the advantages that they get when they do their postdoctoral position or after doing their postdoctoral position? And what are the advantages or what are the disadvantages that they go through when doing their postdoc or after postdoc. So come along with me and let's discuss the complete topic in detail. So we have made an analysis based on the postdoctoral students who are in the United States of America along with the analysis done together for all of you who are watching out this video. So watch out the video completely. Suppose you, you would like to take a postdoctoral position in the United States of America. This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So let's get started to the video. So let's break the truth of postdoctoral position in the United States of America. What are the benefits and what are the disadvantages? So first, let's crawl on to what's the benefit if you are going to do postdoctoral positions in the United States of America. So if you are planning or if you are already over there, what are the things I'll be talking? So first important thing is career developmental opportunity. So is it a real truth that uh, when they do their postdoctoral position in the United States of America and after completing their postdoctoral position, are they getting a job in the United States of America or in, throughout the world? If we have to talk about the career opportunity after completing their postdoctoral position in the United States of America, if they are going to be very, very upskill, then definitely they get opportunity in the entire global. You can find out a lot of people after completing their postdoctoral position in the United States of America has landed up in very good position in the pharmaceutical company, biotechnology company, and even they came back to India and they started working as scientists. So when I have to talk about the truth behind doing a postdoctoral position in the US, we can say the career development opportunity is going to be maximum. The next situation is new research opportunity. Are they getting any research opportunity? So we have to consider the scenario like in United States of America, after completing their postdoc, are they getting only academic positions or are they entering into research positions? To be telling honestly, there are a lot of opportunity entering into a research position that entering into the academic positions. So new research opportunities are available in the colleges or university as a researcher, not as a professor, as well as they have an opportunity entering into pharma companies, biotech companies, many more. So they do have research opportunity. One comparison that we can make is like PhD in the US, people used to be kind of dependent on the supervisor when they carry out some experiment. But during postdoctoral positions, uh, they tend to learn independency, like they tend to become like uh, starting off a new laboratory, even that way they develop themselves. Like they have a lot of opportunity when they go in for postdoctoral position. And of course, they develop a lot of new skills and transferable skills. This is very important because postdoctoral position already as a PhD holder itself, you have developed a lot of skills and you know many things about research. And this will upskill a lot than before. Networking becomes easier. This I would like to add on to this point like in US, uh, the networking becomes easier because if you want to land up in a job in the United States of America, you need to know person who are working in biopharma, biotechnology companies or in the academic positions. So the networking becomes easy, like because they used to go in for a lot of conferences and they used to interact with scientists. They used to interact with company heads, marketing people, and they also have an opportunity to interact with many, many individuals. So networking is kind of easier when we talk in case of United States of America and the funding opportunity is when we compare it with other countries, we know that United States of America is growing tremendously in biotechnology as well as molecular biology. Almost we can say seven to eight percentage growth is going to take place in biotechnology and molecular biology. Of course, if someone is looking for a postdoctoral position in the United States of America in most of the colleges, like we can say uh, John Hopkins University or Harvard University, Stanford University, or we can say University of Illinois or Northwestern, Northeastern University, wherever you go in for MIT, wherever you go in for, you will always see the funding opportunity for a postdoctoral position is literally higher than anywhere else you can see it around the globe. 
so leave and time off yes so as a postdoctoral fellows they would be enjoying this heritage like they don't have to work like from morning this time to this time they are given privileges like they can work from 8 hours of any period of time and they are given holidays on the weekends and they have times off and they can go in for vacation these are some of the privileges that they get as a postdoctoral fellow so this benefit is actually been given as a postdoctoral fellow of course international scientific exposure since uh, biotech hub is going to be united states of america so a lot of international conferences and interaction with the scientists throughout the globe will come over there so they tend to have a lot of international scientific exposure towards a lot of people so this makes them a kind of a head of out of all the researchers out over there and of course learning different cultures and exploring the entire united states of america how it stands number one over there so everything you get to know when you are going to do your postdoctoral position over there and the most important thing is health insurance so if i have to talk about a health insurance when you've been hired uh, through a h1b visa i'll be talking about what is this h1b visa what exactly happens is this health insurance has to be taken or medical insurance has to be taken if it is not done within a period of time some universities used to apply through the university so they get the medical insurance also some cases they will be going and applying the post doctors will be going and applying to the medical insurance some university will help through getting their medical insurance also so health insurance and medical insurance is a must when you're going to work as a post doctoral fellow in the united states of america i'm going to list out some of the fellowship for all of you who are watching out this video this would be a real help uh for all of you it's a great uh, analysis that's been done so you can just take a screenshot if you really wanted to take so for indians i'm going to talk separately and what is the international scholarship that are available many people are actually enjoying these fellowship fulbright nehru post doctoral research fellowship for indians and serb indo us post doctoral fellowship for indian researchers only this serb indo us is for almost 6 to 1 year duration only and ugc raman fellowship for post doctoral positions for indian students only in the united states these are some of the prestigious post doctoral positions for indian students who have done phd in india the rest of the things are for international students there are many more i'm going to go show you the list also this is a u w international fellowship almost 30000 US dollars they're going to give you for a um, for a year and american brain tumor this is mainly for brain tumor research and this is almost going to be 1 lakh uh, us dollar for one year which is a great amount when we compare it with this one and of course nih uh, which provides almost 50 us dollars when we talk about the salary of the post doctoral fellowship almost 47 to 55 US dollars you can get in most of the university even it's going to be a private university or any sort of university this is going to be the range like almost 45 to 55000 US dollars you're going to get for one year almost we can say like 4 lakh to 5 uh, lakh uh, per month we can say 4 lakh according to an indian rupee almost 4.5 lakh uh for one month you can get and graduate women in science this is exclusively for women 10000 US dollars American Association for Cancer Research if someone is looking for cancer research then you can go for this and Parkinson Foundation is going to give for basic scientists this is also available and of course Mary Curie Actions Fellowship and Humboldt Research Fellowship and these are some of the list of fellowships that's available in the US for the international students and all the deadlines have been listed here so this is all about the fellowship that's available which means after completing your phd there are a lot of opportunities to go in for us and work as a post doctoral fellow which the package or the fellowship is going to be literally higher when we talk about in case of phd the next important thing if someone has done post doctoral position that's the most important thing after reaching over there they got the skill but if somebody wanted to return back to india are there any fellowship available in india yes there is there is a fellowship called as ramlinga swami fellowship this is a fellowship to attract the uh, indian researchers who are working abroad to come back to india and take up the position this fellowship is very very reputed fellowship you can watch out the video and we'll be coming about the advantages of this fellowship soon also so now the next important thing is okay post doctoral position in the us is very good but what's going to be the future scope so they can enter into academia but usually in the us getting into an academia is kind of difficult when we talk in case of industry whenever you go in for post doctoral position it's very easy to go on to a track of a pharma or a biotech company so what are the research you can go for in an industry or in a research laboratory research scientist 
clinical research associate research associate or you can become an editor analyst medical license so this usually comes through the pi you're going to work or through the alumnus who have worked over there an indian student or you can get through any sort of internship or through networking this job opportunity will happen because of networking or through the skills because of your uh, publications or you have done wonderful research and it's been published everywhere and you've been connected with people then definitely getting a job in the us after your post doc become easy until and unless a networking happens the next we already talked about what are the benefits now we have to come to the other part of the side yes focusing on to this side is also important so let's talk about what's the disadvantages that they face or what are the problems that they go through when they start as a post doctoral position in the united states of america this is an analysis taken from the students or the post doctoral people in the us so you can literally find the real facts so finding housing in san francisco or los angeles or chicago or new york or seattle is always very difficult very specifically in case of los angeles and san francisco and new york and seattle is kind of difficult so usually when you talk in case of a post doctoral positions in the united states of america um uh, most of the universities doesn't provide accommodation or housing uh, things in the campus itself that's not going to be possible for a post doctoral fe fellows and some of the university provide in house also but with a condition of one year or one and a half year they give you after that you have to go out and you have to stay off campus only so it's very difficult to get a campus rental accommodation if you're going to go in for your post doctoral position so when you start uh, your process of post doctoral position you should start looking for a uh rent houses uh, even before you go off from india uh you can take up some studio houses or one bhk and you can go in for this one but finding those things are really really important you can get connected with the indian community people through your fp or through a linkedin and you can talk about it there are a lot of indian uh, students who are literally working as a post doctoral fellow now the next important thing is expenses yes so if we have to summarize as i already told you 50000 us dollars for one year so if we have to divide that into a monthly one almost 4000 us dollars they used to get it every month so 4000 us dollars means in that if we have to segregate all other expenses how much they're going to get in hand if they are going to be uh, alone like we can say only one person has gone not with a the family then what's going to be the scenario the room rent is really huge when we compare it with the other cities us uh, the room rent is kind of used uh, very huge you can take up some uh, double sharing together with your partner or anybody your friends or somebody else or else you can go for studio houses that's far better when we talk in that case so the rent if we have to talk about an average range uh, in case of New York was very very expensive like 900 to 1000 you can expect but when we talk in case of San Francisco Los Angeles and Chicago almost 700 which is a um, very very uh, nominal range we can say a basic house not an expense one we can see or a very well equipped one you cannot expect that much almost 650 to 900 you can finish but if you want some privileges then it comes almost to 1000 us dollars so 1000 us dollars it's going to be kind of privilege you can take up 1000 but usually 700 to 900 the accommodation expenses usually comes but there are houses where you can get for almost 500 us dollars also studio houses are also available and apart from that insurance of the house has to be paid this is very important we don't have insurance in india uh for the houses but there they do have because they have a lot of things that's been happening in the home because they too do take care of the uh, home expenses and if any medical emergency has to happen that is also sorted or if the house any accidents is happens if you're going to pay an insurance for the house definitely the complete things will be taken care of by the government if you pay the insurance that's the main purpose the insurance is also taken care of so if as i already mentioned if it's going to be 50000 us dollars for one year 4000 us dollars you will get as a monthly income every month you're going to get and out of that insurance will be 750 us dollars utilities if you're going to buy something else uh, 250 us dollars with your grocery uh travel mostly people try to travel in a metro in a train usually or by walk which is close by they used to take and when we compare it almost we can say insurance uh, utilities are going to be 1000 and the houses if you are going to take a maximum range 1000 so 2000 us dollars goes in this is so remaining 2000 us dollars you have accordingly you have to plan and then you have to save it yourself or you can spend on whatever you want to go in for and car ownership 
you can also take up if you're going to stay a bit far from your university then definitely you have to go in for your car ownership but getting a loan for a car is very very difficult hard to get loans for your car or develop a credit history early for credit check by renters is usually not going to be that possible so this is going to be kind of uh, difficulties or the problem that they usually face over there if they go in as a student alone not with a family Suppose if they go in as a family, then is there any other opportunities available? That's where I will be talking about the visa details also. The next comes uh, taxes. Yes, of course, they have to pay a tax. So for a yearly, as I already told you, for yearly, there would be 50,000 US dollars. So 20 percentage of that income tax will be going and it will be from January to December. So after two years, social security and medical care taxes will also be taken care of. But usually uh, medical insurance will be within a month by the university or you can apply. But medical care tax will be after some two years of period of time. You can go in for this. The next most important thing is visa. This is the most important thing. So I'm going to talk about four type of visa, which is H1B visa, J1 visa, J2 visa and F1 visa. So first, let's talk about H1B visa. Most of the postdoctoral fellows, if you're going to see, they would be having either a H1B visa or a J1 visa. H1B visa will be given by any of the university or by the supervisor. University will provide you this H1B visa where you will be uh, going there and working over a period of time, almost some six years, they used to give you a time period. And this is for the employment opportunity that they are going to provide, telling that they're going to sponsor you. That's the main purpose. H1B visa will be given to a postdoctoral fellow. Another scenario is J1 visa. This J1 visa will be given for research assistant people or for a postdoctoral position people or for an assistant professor or for any students, mostly not for the students, uh, anybody who wants to go for research uh, positions, they will be given J1 visa, which means they can only work only in the university if they are working over there they should not do any other jobs apart from this one but h1b visa you can literally go for a part-time jobs and what is about j2 visa j2 visa is going to be a dependent visa which means if a family is over there uh, if the wife is going along with the husbands the wife can take up the j2 visa which is a dependent visa so tax benefits are given if if dependent visa is given but j2 visa people can work so they also can work and f1 visa is going to be uh, only for the students who are going to the US to study like bachelors or masters, F1 visa will be given. Most probably you will get H1B visa or J1 visa will be given. Some of the university doesn't provide J1 visa, uh, H1B visa. They provide only J1 visa. Some of the universities like Northwestern University or if you go in for Northeastern University or University of Illinois usually provides H1B visa. But if we talk in case of MIT usually provides J1 visa and they don't provide H1B visa. If anybody wants to stay over there, it, it has to be getting a job over there. Then only they can uh, get the privileges over there. So. If I have to summarize talking about the postdoctoral position in the US, they do have some benefits, they do have some disadvantage. Uh, but how you tackle the expenses and how you tackle over there, because if you're going to go alone, there are uh, certain things that you have to go through it, like being alone and then working on it. So it has a positive side, it has a negative side. Uh, but most probably it's going to give you a lot of benefits because we know that biotechnology and molecular biology are really booming enough in the United States of America. So if you can fetch a job over there or come back to India and make miracles, then definitely nobody says going over to the US is the wrong thing. So Benefits and disadvantages are all, all, always there. So it's up to you to take up the decision. So, so decide accordingly and plan accordingly and fly over to US and do great things uh, for our country. Thank you all of you for joining and I'm going to meet you back again with another lovely video. Thank you.